Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, Art. Welcome back. Friday. Welcome back. The last Friday of October, right? I think. Is it? And it's Halloween this weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah. Celebrating. Wow. Very cool. Let's see. Um, I'm heading to the Southern Command. So this time next week, I will be in warmer temperatures, southern latitudes. Lucky you. Fort Myers, right? Fort Myers. Heading down to Fort Myers. We'll be there in a by Sunday. So that's cool. But all my stuff, my studio as it is, is all shipped down. I've got the little laptop. It's running fine. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, Art, there's, you know, I don't it, they hate to keep beating the same old drum, but there's a lot going on in terms of the AI world. Um, I had an epiphany the other day relating to copiers and office technology that um, we might want to talk about. I, I heard from our friend down in, here, uh, in Australia, one of the copier dudes down there. Uh, Mitchell, I don't know if you remember him, but um, Philby, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he's he's running a bunch of AI stuff down there, but he the the thing is he's an MPS dude, right? And I think what caught my eyes, he wrote another MPS article or something like that. But uh, right, it, interesting how the rest of the world is paced either behind, pretty much behind where we're at, or in a whole other area. Because I've been concentrating on Europe and and. You know, now a little bit more in Taiwan, and I'd love to tell you about my Taiwan thing, but we might not be able, maybe we won't. Anyway, lots of changes, lots of stuff going on with um, with AI, and we can get into it. But I really want to start anything new in the copier world. What have you heard? Anything? Uh, let's see. Um, this week, um, kind of kind of slow week. CDA had their meeting out in uh, I was, Vegas. I was just going to say that. Yeah, the CDA had their, their meeting. And um, other than that, um, I guess uh, the only news I have is Xerox launched a partnership in the New York Islanders. Um, Great America posted something about uh, their um, partnership with B2B Toolbox. Oh, well, I missed that. So apparently, really, um, it is uh, announced that a new capability integrates financing into an e-commerce platform. Oh, I did read that. Yes, because we talk. Someone I was talking about was about e-commerce, and right. that did come up. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, the collaboration is supposed to enhance the sales process for office technology providers and create a full digital experience for their clients um i mean it's as good far as i'm concerned great america's you know they're probably code is gonna um be embedded in the b2b toolbox so that when somebody goes on and clicks a copier for ten thousand dollars then it's going to give them the financing options yeah it's going to uh, lead them from the financing pricing it's going to lead them to submit a credit app and everything will be taken care of digitally. And it will probably, I don't know yet, but I would tend to think if it's a fully digital process, it will deliver the digital documents to the end user. Digital doc, I would imagine it's going to link up with the rates. So when the rates change, it'll be automatic or whatever, be, be there to handle that. It'd be cool if uh, approvals were automatic too. I mean, I don't know how deep that'll go, right? If, um, it's probably going to send the auto, you know, probably once it has the, you know, the um, client's email address, it'll probably send out the approval. The send approval out the approval. Right to the client. And then hopefully a digital DNA. Di or, yeah, digit, uh, delivery and acceptance, because that's... That will be interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because technically, you can't sign the DNA before the DNA before the machine's been delivered. It's and a delivery, doing, and if you're just doing an e-commerce site, well, what happens then when once the equipment is delivered, and the client doesn't follow up on the DNA, or is, are they going to do it like they did COVID, where they had the mm. people were signing? There was a, a, a addendum where they were signing in advance, even though. The equipment wasn't delivered, which then opens up another can of worms is what happens if the equipment is, I don't know, postponed for three weeks, five weeks. Um, what happens if the equipment is damaged? What happens if it doesn't get there? There's all sorts of 
if that's now I can see the COVID thing was a special thing that would be right. you know temporary and special, but um, this issue, I mean, at the very this thinking crazy thoughts right here is like, okay, did the machine show up? Yep, send a picture of it. Okay, there you go. Because it, it it does, you know, if there isn't such a thing, the opportunity for fraud at a huge level starts to happen, right? Because then you can just have DNAs out there that don't exist to, you know, people, to companies and things like that. Well, that people never got the equipment and they signed people the never DNA got, and yeah. it almost acts as, a, as somebody could perpetuate a, a virtual loan with no hardware in place. Incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a little thing. I'm sure it's all taken care of. I'm sure there's something in there. And it might just be the old manual process. Sorry. Yeah. You have to get a signature from the customer, from your customer when this, when it's delivered, when it's when it technically supposed to, when it's installed and it works. Or, or maybe it's not going to be a full digital process. Maybe, you know, since uh, a B2B toolbox operates with dealers who are doing e commerce sites, um, then it's up to that mm. dealership to go get the final DNA uh, done, which leads me to another question. Interesting if it's, question. If, it, if the machine's being sold through e-commerce and no rep is involved. Right, right. Um, me? I'm not going to want to go out and get that. I mean, I mean, I, not if I'm not getting anything on it, why should I go out and make sure it, it, I follow up and it gets signed and et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, that's a compensation issue. So if it does, so, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it sources out of the dealer's inventory anyway. I'm guessing that would be uh, that would most likely that would be correct. Right. So it's up to the dealer. You could just tell people to go. Yeah, go. It's in your territory. Go get a DNA, and that's it. Or it's in your territory. You get a three percent kicker for getting the DNA signed, or whatever it is. Right. Just whatever, because heck. If it is all what we're talking about, e-commerce, the uh, acquisition cost of that sale is zero almost, right? Right. right. They didn't have but to do anything, as a, but as a sales rep, I'm not going out and chasing fucking dollar bills. Mm -mm. You're not. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Which reminds me, I mean, there's a difference, right? The newbies would, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> part of your training process, you've got to deliver DNAs for the first 24 months. But <laughs> no, 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 we'll get you. You get a spiff every ninety days. Um, what do you get? A Starbucks card, yeah. Right. So you know, uh, just going back, I haven't had anybody ask me in the last five years. Hey, do you have an e-commerce site where I can just order something off of? Well, Art, that's true. I'd also say that the ones who want the e-commerce wouldn't ask you for the e-commerce they'd find it well or or who knows I, I mean but i agree with your premise not everyone's out there buying copiers out on e-commerce especially the smb still even as commoditized as it is right if you think i mean the comp it's 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 more complex than buying an automobile and it's, they're having a hard time selling cars online most most don't know their print volumes. Uh, most uh, aren't aware of their history of print volumes, um, and that makes it a little tougher because I would say eighty percent of the industry of the clients want a maintenance agreement in place because that's what they've been used to, and that can give them a predictable cost. Right? Who wants to finance a piece of equipment or get a piece of equipment and have an unpredictable cost oh no business. you don't want to do there's that there's nothing there's nothing you can budget um well let's see does it, how, how you know who's a good person to ask is probably earl right because right. he does that what it, whatever he heck he does what no no all overage all, all, all included yeah. yeah so that might fit right into that model because you know just in bed what what would i in bed 100 a month Right, a <laughs> hundred images a month or whatever. I mean, that's terrible. I'm sure it's more well, than that. You could actually have you can you can have different choices in your e-commerce site for include this amount of pages per month or include yeah, this amount. Yeah, that's what I do. Have at least five uh, five uh, radio buttons that you would click for certain volumes. Yeah, just do that. And there's a caveat, you know, if you do go, you know, put all that crap in it. If you do go over, we're going to charge you the, somehow. Right. But yeah, it it's not as cut and dry as it you know 
is going to Amazon and picking up even a printer, even a personal printer is is complicated now. A little more, you know. I mean, it's not just like buying pens and pencils. Yeah, uh, plus the you know, plus all the printer manufacturers and the smaller MFP providers really. I, I uh, lie about oh my no. their cost, the lie about their cost per page because when <laughs> when, when, you, when you see cost per page as low as three cents for black or as low as five cents whatever it is the cost per page is for black or color um, they only look at their consumable parts consumable right. items right but those consumable items a lot of manufacturers have moved the fuser units transfer belts over to the parts side, even though they have a limited life uh, expectancy. Yeah, there's a life expectancy on there. there. It will wear out. Right, right. But they don't include that in their estimated cost per page of what it's going to cost you to run that device, which is a bunch of freaking hogwash. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that's one of the places in the industry that there's been all sorts of tomfoolery and shenanigans and stuff it will but continue that, yeah i know well i think what'll cleanse that out is when people stop buying copiers hey so <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't see it ending anytime I soon know, i know so there, there was a good uh did you catch the uh podcast from aim and um twain developing group i think i did but I don't with, remember uh, Joe, it. With Joe, Joe from uh, Joe. Oh. Uh, ah, what's Joe's last name? Uh, from Kodak. Yeah, our Joe, right? The one we've talked to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I do okay. remember it. Yes, 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 yes. So if you caught that, there was uh, it's something interesting that he believes uh, the term uh, digital transformation is too um, too broad, uh, and it may go it may go by the wayside. Uh, in what to replace it is uh, what he referred to as IDP. Yeah, what was that? Image, Image doc document, document processing. Potato, potato. I know, I know. Well, I think digital transformation should be dead anyway because it's been used too much. For crying out loud! I mean, it's not just documents; it's it is everything. But um, image document processing—that's that's fine with me. That narrows it down to to that particular niche. So yeah, cool. correct. Hey, I, yeah. I, you know, I give him a hard. I don't not give him a hard time, but that's where the growth is. I think in wide format and, and uh, capture. I still believe that that's where. Oh, it's got me. I I, I, I I walked in an office today and just, I, I mean, they had um, rolls and rolls of old legacy prints that were just. Yeah. sitting out in the open i mean why why should a cu customer every customer who has a building they pay per square foot right mm -hmm. for yep. either maintenance or rent know where or you're going you're it. absolutely right yeah. why do they why, why should they have to take up space for paper-based documents right that, I, I mean that should be a no-brainer for any company to say okay we don't need to have any file cabinets in our office anymore. There's no need for it anywhere with the technology that's available. Yep. yep. Think, of, think of how much money you could just save in the square footage uh, for the rent space or the the, the owning space, right? It's Not the alone. whole thing. It's the rent. It's the utilities, the electricity, the heating space, all that stuff. There's right. all sorts of things involved with that. Um, right. So, so Joe went on to mention that, um, you know, uh, IDP or uh, image uh, document processing is uh, this is going to be here for quite a while still. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that I, so yes, it's going to be here for a while. The one thing that's been creeping in my mind the last couple, two, three weeks has been, I hate to use the word hybrid, but a hybrid, right? And I, I'm, I it was on our show and I'm not sure if it was Joe who mentioned it, <clears throat> but there was uh, some mention of a system a digital system that helps them manage printed documents. I think someone just threw it out there as a throwaway statement. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, what? So like a digital system to manage paper documents. No, that would be, um, Kodak brought that up with their info, info so, solution or info input or something. The, the idea that I heard or got, and I could be wrong, was that 
we still have the physical pieces of paper, but it's all being managed digitally. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, what, what the hell does that mean? All right, so what? I've got a front end here. It's like the old school, not microfiche, but the old school robots that would, what would they grab? And what, what video was that? You know, there, there was a time when you would have these, and it's um, maybe a Mission Impossible, but it was real. So you'd have these archives, these digital archives that had tons and tons of hard drives, literally physical devices. Think of the old CD-ROMs, the old, you know, right. storage. Device. And they're all stored, stories tall, and a mechanical arm would go out and pick whatever you needed and then load it in, right? As opposed to it being always online and always connected because it was a level of security, right? If it's not connected, no one can get to it. Yeah, okay? it would, uh, it would I get it. That document uh, XYZ is located on disk right. 18. It, right, right. So it was a digital way to manage digital assets as versus what I picked up from whoever, Joe must have said it, a digital way to manage analog assets. And that, that kind of fascinated me for, for a little bit. It's like, all right, that's cool. Because digital, as we know, once the end comes, it's all going to disappear. You're not going to be able to go back 3,000 years from now when you know no one uses tape to pick up data off of a, a cassette tape or an 8-track right. because the, the technology will be gone. Hey, be believe it or not, I was, in a, I was in an account this week who was still putting documents onto microfiche. No way. Yeah. I mean... I mean, no way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know the machines still exist. They still exist. I was surprised when uh, they brought me over and showed me. I was like, S "They still exist?" He goes, "Yeah, even even where where you know, for some customers, they're still asking for to put it on film." I go, "Okay." Wow. I don't know. That's really funny. This came up. This second time it's come up in the last few days. I don't know what the heck. I was walking by a TV somewhere, and someone was watching this show. And it's a real. It's. A, I think it's one of the NCIS shows, right? I don't watch them, so I don't know. But I'm watching them, and there's someone sitting at a desk rifling through microfiche. I'm going, "What the hell is going on?" I go, "Yeah, it takes place in 1980." Oh, okay. <laughs> but so they still use it. That's interesting, Art. I'm wondering if there is something there. Digitally control, digitally manage analog assets. I have to, I'll have to write something up on that. But anyway, so that's one thing that continues to be interesting in our, our little niche. Um, the so, CDA meeting was funny because I just saw pictures of it. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not going to pick on the CDA, but I'm going, geez, I'll Pete's 1993 call. It looks exactly the same, and I think the slide again. I'm not picking on anyone, but the th the slide that I saw was sales and marketing alignment. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Yep. Yep. I was interested to see what that uh, what that was all about. Well, I can probably write the script or go to ChatGPT or Perplexity and pull one up that's up to date. But um, you know, I don't know. It's working. So whatever, uh, it's just wow, just fascinating, fascinating. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking for something on a recent um, Netflix series that I saw. All right, um, now we're getting into it. All right, yeah. What do you? Sci-fi. It was sci-fi. Describe what happens, and I'll probably know it. Describe what happens, and I'll probably know it. Ooh. So, so uh, about these three people from England, or th th there were six people originally, three people got killed, and they would wear these headsets that were interfacing with the uh, aliens that were yeah. supposedly coming to the planet to uh, take over, but they weren't going to be here in 400 okay. years. Oh, all right. It's terrible because I, I it's on the fringe of my... Um... My memory, so I don't uh, remember. I'm trying to look it up on uh, Netflix. I think the three three was in the three body problem. That was oh. it. Oh, I did see that. That's crazy. That's absolutely, that right? is crazy. Right? That, if you want to talk about sci-fi and future, and I mean, well, it, it's even it's based on the three body pro problem, which is a real astrophysics problem. I wasn't they, aware of that. 
Yeah. Uh, so the whole thing is based on the three orbiting bodies. Blah, 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 you know, mm-hmm. it, it's like, okay, I'm lost, but I'm hanging. And I think it's, is it Korean or Japanese? I'm not sure. It's something. No, from, it's English. They're English? All right. Well, well most of them are in, um, and there's English, there's Americans, there's Indians. Um, well, it's a fascinating. Chesham, Liam Cunningham. Oh, uh, Isaac Gonzalez. Um, pretty, pretty British. Across uh, continents and decades, five brilliant minds, uh, five brilliant friends make earth shattering discoveries as the laws of science unravel uh, in an existential threat. An existential threat <laughs> emerges. <laughs> I think Biden got that better than me. <laughs> no, you got it better than him. Yeah, but let's but not I, let's not pick on the elderly. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was an amazing series. It is. And I, and I went through eight parts and I go, man, I can't wait until the next part. And how about the part where they, the guy was dying of cancer and they were able to take his brain out and oh. put it in a capsule and a goddamn capsule fucking exploded. Yeah. Or, or it went off into. That's off right. I forgot it. about that. Yeah. it's go- it, it didn't explode. It's off somewhere. Yeah. Right. So it's, yeah. it's still around. So next season. Just out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's they, well, able to come back around. But, it will. Interesting. But I, but I thought some of the um, um, paths that they were developing were um, pretty unique. Pretty yeah, unique. Art. That's a. It's. It, I've read plenty of articles around that story, and yeah, it's why you know the three body, whatever problem is a serious astro. It's a gravitational issue of some sort, but. Of course, the movie takes it and blows it up into all sorts of other things, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. No, nah, uh, that's a great mention. Another thing that I, I wanted to talk about is that um, you gave me LM notebooks, I believe, last week. Oh, yeah, week yeah, before, yeah. Where, where, where you're able to take a um, uh, a blog, like you and I were, were you know, big in writing blogs, and you can actually take that written content and turn it into um, voices, right? Yeah, it's crazy. So I so I did a recent blog that I did eight uh, traits of copier salespeople, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I really didn't know what I was expecting out of right. it. Right, that's the best. But I was amazed that it actually went outside of the document I wrote and picked off things that I put on the web years ago. I know. I know. Right? And and put it all together in a 20 minute. Now, it would have probably, t- probably taken me five minutes to read the blog. But it gave me a 20-minute podcast. Now, yeah. I've never been a fan of podcasts, right? Just because... <clears throat> time right but then again the other day I, I i had a podcast come across and i go look, i really want to hear this podcast the one actually by aim and uh mm-hmm. twain twain group mm-hmm. said okay i can just listen to this while i'm working right and then i'm going yeah, i'm a late cover to podcasts and i'm going this, this is fantastic i can just sit here and listen to it while i do my work right not that i'm going to comprehend a whole hell of a lot but i i got the gist of you get what the gist. Out. And yeah. now I'm saying, oh, my God, all this content I've written, I, I can now start my own podcast show. Well, so, right, yes, yes. And I'm just like you. When I first use it, I don't know, I put maybe one or two articles. So it's Notebook LM. It's a Google tool yep. that, is, that is free right now. And it's an AI, all blah, 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 blah. Now, I am not a Google fan know that so when i look at stuff from google like i think they just came out with something no that was not them gemini whatever it is um anyway you know i knew about notebook lm i heard people talking about it and you know press and all this stuff and it usually what i if it dies within the next 72 hours as a subject matter then it floats off my radar but if it comes back and it kept coming back by other people and other sources right so yeah i go out there and i figure it out and and i remember reading about it, it says yeah it's a great study tool all right, whatever. So I'm right. looking at it, and it's an interface where you can put sources of knowledge. It can be anything from handwritten, not handwritten, but notes, documents, yep. websites, YouTubes, things like that, into this area, this 
desktop, let's call it, and it will it'll generate a a summary of all those documents. It, remember, it's designed to help people study and research. So that's the that's the leverage point. Right. So as as a student, and you had to write an essay, whatever, you know, from high school to college, you're out there grabbing information, grabbing stuff. You know, you remember the old days of, you know, got papers, lift, write, encyclopedias, dictionaries, all, you know, books, right. whatever. Well, take that analog and put it into there, into this thing. And this thing, it creates a table of contents. It creates a briefing. It creates study guides. It yep. creates questions. And based on that knowledge, quote, knowledge base that you give it, you can ask it questions and it'll draw conclusions. I, I haven't gotten that far. Oh, no. I, this is in the last three or four days. Okay. As an add-on to all that, it creates what they call a, a – it's a cast. It, it has to end up being a podcast, but it creates a, a show. Right. Two people talking yes. about, about the content you yep. put in there. Yep, yep, yep. And it so, is not, and it's not like reading the transcript. Right. They're so, having conversations. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we can uh, share this, and if uh, it blew me and away, if, and if you can hear this. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, right here. Can you see my screen? Uh, probably. I just don't. There we go. Can you see, see it? I, oh yeah, thought that was my screen. Yes, I see it. There you go. So <laughs> Look what you did. <laughs> Can you hear that? You can't hear it. There you go. I heard that. Yeah. What really struck me about this document is it's not just for salespeople. You know. Right. Let's see if I can turn it up. Hold on. I can hear it. You can hear it. Yeah. Valuable insights here that apply whether you're like closing deals, or just navigating everyday life. I like that. Kind of a life hack angle. Exactly. Okay, so what's one of the big takeaways from this copier sales guide? Well, one thing that jumped out at me was how it talks about the role of the copier rep. Okay. No, how... It's not just about pushing products anymore. It's about becoming this, like, trusted advisor. Ah, I see. So it's less about the hard sell and more about building relationships. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially in today's world where People can research anything online. Right. Like, they don't need someone to just tell them about the problem. Right. They can right. Yeah. They want someone who can actually help them solve their problems. Someone they can trust. So how does that actually play out in practice? Like, what is that? All right. Let's, let's, so let's, so, so let's review, Art, what this really, and I, I hope people watch this. All right. Hold on. This document, it all starts with understanding the client's needs on a deeper level. Okay, so killing me. Really I got to plug to back in. Hold on. Not just waiting for your turn to talk. Exactly. It's Come on, all right. Focusing on the, you know, the technical specs of a copy. Technical difficulties here. You're doing great. So to sum up, yeah, I'm here. You, here you put a you put a blog, one of your blogs, into Notebook LM. It digested it, and then you click the button podcast or whatever. I don't even know what that button is. You click that button, and out came this. Is that basically it, Art? Yeah. Did you add any? Oh, I can't hear you. That's fine. I'll keep talking. I can't hear you. You killed your mic. You killed your. Uh, can you hear me? Whatever. Now, now I can. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So, so yeah, I added uh, music at the front and music right. at the back. I'm talking about the content, though. Was it just no, one blog? I, 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 yeah, it was just one blog. I listened. All right. I, I, it turned it into 16 minutes. I listened to all 16 minutes, and there was nothing that I needed to change. And the Isn't LM that crazy? Notebook, LM Notebook actually gives you the opportunity uh, to go in and change something if you don't think it's it interpreted it uh, or comprehended uh, the written piece correctly. Absolutely. It. So, and that's just one blog, Art. So, I know. What, what I've been doing in the last few days is loading up almost like half a dozen to a dozen sources of, of research, right? And it's anything from a, you know, a, a, a website. Sometimes it can't open up the website because the websites, you know, the, you know it's just like everything so, else. So, you what you're telling me it. sometimes what you do is you put the URL in. 
Yep. Instead of loading the document, you just put uh, five or six different URLs. Correct. Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it. Got it. And if it and it'll tell you it can't read the URL, it could be for a dozen different reasons. Then after that, all I do is go out, put right. it into a reader, cut and paste, and then I throw all that into a Word doc, and then I upload the Word doc as a document into the research. So, so, so when you get that, when you get that finished um, MP4 file back, right? Mm -hmm. Can you then add? Uh, in the middle. I know you, we can put stuff on the front end. You can put stuff on the back end through, you know, if you have a, a video editing software, right? right? Well, yeah. But um, you, you could probably do the same then, right? It comes with, with down the, as an MP3. Well, so yeah. it's not a, you know. Well, I, I, com I convert it to an MP4, right? Right. So I put it on my video software. Right. I, I add an intro and I add an ending, but gets me to thinking even more. Oh yeah! If you had a sponsor, you could put your sponsor in front. You could have it at ten minutes. Put another sponsor in. Art, that's just the MP3. That's the audio editing. I don't oh. know anything about that. Yeah, uh, I, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I know the audio audio editing. Yeah, it's something you could do. Absolutely. Yeah. But what you've got is so. My point is, um, you know, you can put a dozen sources at least in there. And but but the the it's it's kind of weird. The podcast is just an add-on. It's not really what that thing was focused on doing. It was more on focused on making a briefing, like wait, helping wait, wait, you wait. study or research. Well, well, damn, I get more value out of the podcast out of the. Mm -hmm. But what they've done recently is, and I haven't used it yet, but they put a button in to when you say generate the podcast, right? It has an option to concentrate on. So you can tell it to concentrate on a certain subject or theme, and it'll do that, right? So yeah. I don't, I haven't experimented with it, right? But I will tell you what, all right, this is where I'm at with it is, I'll go out to Perplexity for free. Yep. I'll ask Perplexity to do a bunch of research for me on whatever subject, right? And it's so far, it's really good. It's up to date. It has the sources right there. Right. Okay. I'll take the output from Perplexity and put it in as a research material for Notebook LM, all right? I I will just chuck full that thing up, right? And then ask for whatever, a briefing, a debriefing, all the study guides, all the answers, everything that it does, kick that out, and I'll dump that all into ChatGPT, one of my chats, one of my right. GPTs. Yep. I say, hey, use this material, these findings, these sources, because with perplexity, I've got all the sources, all right, and write a 455 article in your tone, your style, without adverse, with da 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 boom, and out you go. And out it comes. And I'll bet you I could probably feed that output from GPT into another notebook LM and get another podcast. Or, all right, I'm going to do this, is every single one of my articles for the imaging channel, it's been like two years of new to copy yourselves. Yep. I'm going to dump that in there. And then, so you know what we're doing? We're killing sales trainers. Huh. Why do you need them? Because everything that notebook LM is doing, they did for years, six months. Ask them how long it took to put together a training course. Just a right. simple training. It's like months. Mm -hmm. All right. This thing did, does it with multiple podcast if you want right. one person and if we're doing it it's not like we're, we're teachers it's like we've been in the business right well you know yeah it's in in the old days you had to have a teaching talent of some sort right even more back in the olden olden days teachers were special because they were able to communicate to students in a certain way that right. they could understand whatever it was well that, those days are done right you don't need that anymore so, so how could, is there a way that this can help the down the street sales rep? Right now. Um, with, I mean, producing their, well, I, I would tend to think if they had their own content, they can at least do their own podcast. Doesn't have to be their content. <laughs> so they could take one of our podcast or one of our articles or articles anybody's article and drop it in right? drop it in cut and paste put it into a pdf and say 
it's mine. Uh, interesting. Well, in essence, it is theirs because all you're doing, it's no different than going to the library for research material. Right. Coming up with something right. based on what you put in your brain and what came out. Now, there's the trick. And then delivering that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the podcast is an iteration and interpretation of all that research. Right. That's my view. But yeah, you're right. I mean, and then the article, it could be anything. It, it could be anything. So if I'm getting into, if I, like you, all right, wide format. Oh my God, Art. Right. Yeah. I see an, or sales rep. I see an opportunity here. I don't think anyone's playing in that industry. So what you would do if you are a professional like you are, you go out and learn whatever you could about that particular niche, their business needs, whatever problems they have, you know, right. and then talk to, you know, get familiar with that industry and that niche, right? Okay, that's fine. That's now that you can do, right? The the notebook LM, you can just grab all the information you want, put it in there and then and and it'll tell you about that that stuff. Right. Or grab all that, do what I did and then just put it in perplexity or chat and say, hey, tell me about this industry I'm using this. But you're right. So then if you're really smart, you can create some content. I say create, boy, in a weekend, you could create probably two months worth of content. Probably. And podcasts. As a salesperson. Interesting. You don't, so, need, you don't need the marketing department. You don't need any of that. Oh, my so, God. So let me ask you a, a question. Let's get this. Uh, maybe I'm going to go off the track of office technology. No, I, when, I, when I was uh, high school, right? I used to I, I used to write a lot, right? Oh, okay. So, um, but all of course, the, all of those were on pen and paper, but it was uh, lyrics that I put together. All but, right. And I never did anything with those lyrics. I still mm -hmm. have them. Oh, you do, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, can I can yeah. I put these lyrics in and have one of these programs write me a song? Hell yeah. And and a voice to sing it? Hell and, yeah. And could I tell it to give me the style of uh, what song Snoop was Dog. I listening to today? No, I was listening to uh, uh, House of the Rising Sun. Oh, The Doors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, so what do you, LM, you, you, LM notes, that wouldn't do that, but that would probably be another site, correct? That could do that. Well, what you could do, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you scan in the the documents. Yeah, or retype them. You could do either one, and then ask it as a, it'll interpret what I just scanned it as a PDF. You could tell it to do that, and it'll do the best it can, and probably pretty good, but or not, or type them all in, and then put them in. And um, shit, Chetchy GPT is perfect for that because it's more of a creative assistant. Perplexity is a very good research and but development. It wouldn't be voice and music, would it? No, no, no. It's, that's your first step, <coughs> right? Is to is to create a lyrical and it, and then ask those questions. You know, based on the lyrics, what's the best style of music? Based on the lyrics, based on and because it it'll take the tone, the syllables, the beat of the ba -ba 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 -ba, whatever it is, and then give you recommendations. And art, there is software. I don't know it, but there's software out there that you can give it words and it'll sing. All right, in whatever voice style you want, male, female, blah, 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 all that stuff. The creative, oh, and and that'll you want to that'll be on my bucket list. It put it on your next month list because then you can create a music video. It does that, right? And they're do people are doing it right now. I've heard about that. Yes, it's. I mean, right. actually, the creative side is just blown up more than the business side. I agree. Right? I yeah. agree. So but, before yeah. uh, before we uh, end our show today, oh, yeah. um, we also wanted to talk a little bit about what we're using. Uh, Greg and I used it uh, last week, and we're using it this week. Yeah. It's actually called Fireflies. I, I have some questions, too. So, so, But anyway, go ahead. What were you going to talk about? What were you going to say about it? So Fireflies is a, uh, a note-taking um, AI um, tool that you can use for mm. your Zoom meetings, your uh, MS Teams meetings, and it actually records the um, our conversation. And when the conversation, the show is over, it will actually give you a, a series of notes 
as to who spoke about what, when they spoke about uh, how many words they were speaking. Um, uh, and, and basically, so, so if you're like me and we do a show, and then I may not have the time to um, put the show into an MP4 format three or four days. I've already forgotten about basically what we spoke about at our show. But the Fireflies allows you to go back and say, okay, yes, this is what we spoke about. So I can put those notes on my YouTube channel or I can put them on my P4P channel um, as, as a reminder. But think about it in the business sense of it when you're having a meeting with a client and I would say that 60% of my meetings are now virtual compared to 100% being on site. Mm. And, you know, while you're presenting, right, you don't, when, and, and somebody asks, a client asks a question or they start talking about something else, a lot of times you don't have the time to take those, I know. excuse me, you don't have the time to take those notes or write those notes. So Fireflies gives you a great tool at the end of that conversation to review your next steps with the, with the client or what they spoke about or if they had additional questions that maybe you said, I, I don't have the answer, but I'll get back to you with it. Yeah. And, you know, we don't have a special relationship with Fireflies, which is too bad because they should be paying us for this, but it is huh. pretty good, right? I would, but I would also say there are other note taking or um, what are the virtual attendees or whatever that right. are sitting in on Zoom sessions, Googles, and they do, they function basically the same. There's a little more details you can get with some of them. It'll even tell you who's paying attention and who's not paying attention. I don't even know if that matters. But Art, what I wanted to do is because you and I had a meeting with, um, who do we meet with? We met with a bunch of people and that I think you had Firefly's fireflies lit uh well oh, it was with joe yeah somebody else actually had it lit that's how i found out about it okay so i think joe okay i was going to try and share my screen you're going to have to enable it so joe oh, sent right. over the notes just like you've done right or somehow i got in touch with the notes of, the, of that meeting right it was and to bring everyone up to speed it was art and i talking to a group of folks with the one of our buddies joe um and we hold were on. talking about okay. hold on everybody Everything okay? Yeah, here we are. Yeah. All right, good. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, all right. You're going to edit that out, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. So we were talking about the LLM. No, no, notebook, notebook, and the podcast. Firefox. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, all right, can you open up my ability to share? Uh, all right. Um, should have it. All right, let's see. Which one do I want to share? Is it is it sharing right now? Should be. I opened it up. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. I didn't push the right button. There we go. Okay. So you can see. So what I've done here, um, you can see it, right, Art? Yep. LM, L, LMs to sell more now. This is from uh, our meeting with Joe. And I've also got some other ones here, you know, AI and the Rocks. Um, yeah. I took a bunch of bourbon articles, put them in, details. You know, did, did, did. Ooh, wow, that's a big one. Uh, sex and tech, very interesting. Right. Copy your sales scanning, that's you and me. And um, I forget who that is, but that's one of ours. And this is the very beginning. So um, I just uploaded them into Spotify. But mm -hmm. this one, you going to hear it? You didn't hear it. Of buzz lately. AI sales. So you can hear it. Specifically, those large yes, language yes. models. So it's the same thing language, you probably heard about that we were TV talking about with what you did. Right. That's because that's what it felt like to the sales training into. Like everyone in that room could feel it. We're on the verge of something big. Yeah, and it's easy to get caught up in all the hype. But what we're really interested in are the practical takeaways. How are actual sales pros? using these tools right now to close more deals. Okay, all right. we talked about that, right? We didn't really express it explicitly. That's correct. We, we talked about it and yeah. it picked it up and that's an emotional, I, you know, this is what I'm, I'm, you know, this is crazy. It picked up on an emotional, an emotion and expressed that. We didn't say anything 
like it's very emotional and this is very you know what i mean so this is pretty this is pretty significant stuff yeah pretty intense yeah. it's nuts uh, so let me ask you a question on the, i didn't do that much with the uh with the lm notebook can you um i saw you can have multiple people one person two people uh, three people but can you have like different uh accents on okay I, I, I know what you're asking but let me let me pretty much give you let me stop you right there no not yet but remember the goal of this particular app this this llm right. for research and study yeah it's not for presentations and talk shows now we we are using because it's fine right it's absolutely fine that's right but, but no, it, it on its own does not shift into different languages, right? Or um, accents. But again, are there are at least there are dozens of apps out there that will do that. That will automatically translate. I mean, you know, like we're saying, we get it. Once you any of those questions that you ask that are more on the creative side, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. You want a different accent? Yes. There are bots out there that are existing today that have replaced you know, thousands of call center employees in the Philippines that will, the bot will hear the end user's accent and then dive into responding with that accent. Interesting. It's, you know, but it makes sense, right? If someone calls in from, oh, I don't know, uh, France to a call center and they speak French, the bot will pick up that it's speaking French and respond in French. Mm -hmm. So if you call from Georgia and you got a night or Texas, you got a nice Texas accent, it'll pick up on that and could in turn respond to you with that accent. Got it. Got it. I did see in this LM that you could actually um, tell it what, what language you wanted to speak in. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, you know, as far as how it can help uh, copier guys or anyone in sales, yeah. If you want to research, I, I've, Enterprise and strategic selling, you've got a multiple decision maker, global account, Fortune 1000, you know, 12, 24 month cycle, complex right. sale. That's, this is powerful because you're going to, you're going to have intelligence. You're not, not only are you going to have it in your head, you're going to be able to articulate value based on these, not based, but using these tools. And right now in a unique manner, but here's, here's the thing. They're no big deal. Everyone's going to be able to do it in the next you know 24 months this is not going to be a big deal i've compared ai to 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 a mouse right because the mice came out no one knew how to use it right no nope. no one knew how to use it but like that boom so ai and llms are going to be the same thing they can be so intuitive that we don't even think about it anymore Correct. but the advantage comes to the early adopters in this case absolutely there you go there you go. Yeah. So, so all you salespeople out there, do some early adoption. Get in tune with technology. Uh, look at the stuff that Greg and I spoke about today, which was uh, um, fireflies, and we spoke about LM notes. Uh, notebook, uh, uh, note LM. Yeah, it's on Google. Notebook LM. There you go. Notebook LM, and uh, uh, be creative. Play around with it. Um, see how you can take these applications and uh, gain yourself a business advantage over wow. your competitors because I, I, I can I can see it already. Um, uh, unfortunately, I've got, you know, I'm trying to inter, inter, intertwine my day job with my part-time job, um, but all it takes sometimes is 30 minutes and in 30 minutes, you'll be amazed at what you can create. It's incredible. I, I would say you get a 10X on it. If you invest 30, you're going to get 300 in res in results. It's yep. it's that big. It's and I'm just goofing around with it. You get serious with it in a 10 30 yeah. exit. Anyway, yeah, yeah I agree. Hey, Art. Okay. So everyone, we are at the witching hour. We're at a little Ooh. bit uh, late today. Um we uh thank you for tuning in. Uh keep in mind uh that if you're a sci-fi buff, please catch three body problem. Uh, both Greg and I love it and uh, can't wait till the next season to see what happens. Uh, always remember to like, follow, and share. And we'll be back here up. again next week. Thanks, Greg. See you guys.